I mean, you got to remember that African history precedes European development by 10,000 years. The pyramids are 10,000 years old. And they finding out now that they're even older than that. The Europeans didn't come, on his, come into history until the Greek period and also after the Greeks, the Romans. On August 20th, 1619, 20 Africans arrived at Point Comfort, present-day Fort Monroe in Hampton, Virginia, aboard a Dutch ship. They were the first Africans on record to be forcibly settled as involuntary laborers in the North American British colonies. On February 28th, 2017 in Washington, Congressman Bobby Scott of Virginia introduced a resolution in the House of Representatives that would establish the 400 Years of African American History Commission to develop and carry out activities throughout the United States to commemorate the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the recorded enslaved Africans arriving at Point Comfort. House Resolution 1242 was voted and passed in the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. On January 10th, 2018, President Trump signed it, making it a law. In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the 400 Years Coalition was established to emulate locally the goals, strategies, and tactics of the National Commission. In response to the request of the 400 Years Coalition, Councilwoman Janie Blackwell introduced in the City our Council city of Philadelphia, a resolution to I establish a Philadelphia committee. All of those who are here for Bill Number 180761 about the creating a special committee on 400 years of African American history, I hope that they will now come forward and take a few minutes to say sure. what they want to say. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, if you, Mr. Lopez, can you help them? Just individuals who are speaking on that. I would just briefly just say thank you very much for this opportunity for Council Lady Blackwell and all city council endorsing the 400 year commemoration of African, free Africans being enslaved in the United States. And we have uh, scholars and activists here beginning with Dr. Malefi Asante, Dr. Diane Turner, the president of the African American Museum in Philadelphia, and many others that are here to speak your remarks. So thank you. I will yield my time to Dr. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schroeder. Mr. President, uh, members of the city council, uh, I rise in this, the name- Just state your name for the record, please, yeah, doctor. I'm, I'm Malefi Kete Asante. Thank you. Uh, chair of the Department of Africology at Temple University. I rise in the name of the 20 Africans who landed in Point Comfort, Virginia, near Jamestown in 1619 to support the resolution for the Special Commission for the commemoration of 400 years of African presence here. I rise in the name of the more than 100 African ethnic groups and nations, Bamaleki, Fulani, Eve, Asante, Fanti, Wolof, Mandinka, Congo, Ga, who came to this country not as slaves, but as persons as African people who were later enslaved in America. I rise to support this resolution in the name of the Africans who experience the brutal dispossession and disempowerment that came with the enslavement itself and those who died on the slave ships and whose bodies were buried in the ocean to energize those oceans. I rise in their name and in the names of those who were resilient and who lived through the suffering of segregation and discrimination in America. And like my ancestors in Georgia who picked cotton and worked in the tobacco fields, I rise in their name to support this special commission for 400 years 
and I rise also in the names of those who became scientists and poets uh, because of the work that they, their, their ancestors have done. And I support this uh, special resolution, and thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Good morning, Good morning pres Mr. President and City Council members as well as the guests that are here. My name is Professor Walter Palmer, University of Pennsylvania, where I teach American racism, and of course I helped create 50 years ago. I think that this resolution is very important, and I think as it recognizes 500 years of slavery inside of America, we need to recognize the fact that Africans have helped to build civilizations all across the world. A dozen or more, or less than a dozen European nations kidnapped, robbed, and stole Africans and brought them to all parts of the world. They took them into the Caribbean and West Indies. They took them into Puerto Rico. They took them into Haiti, into Brazil. They took them into Mexico, into Peru. They were set all over the world. And those Africans which are in Cuba and in Puerto Rico and in Mexico are the same as the Africans who are here. We are African Americans. They are African Brazilians, African Chileans, African Peruvians. And the reality is for us to really not only look at the work that Africans helped to build here in this nation and its economy, but the continued work that they've done all over the world, where America has segued into all these economies to further uh, fasten America's uh, hold on world economies. I think it's important for us to recognize the fact that the reason we come this late, a hundred years later, to have this recognition lies largely because of the fact that many of us have benefited from the largesse of the African people, and at the same time have never really stand, stood up to fight for them. We have a division within inside of our own communities where African Americans, for the most part, have a disdain for poor black people and they have a disdain for African people. And until we start to close those gaps, we will never be able to make the change. And I hope that this commission is more than a show and tell, that it's more than artsy, craftsy, touchy, feely, that it really works towards trying to help restore to the African not only its greatness, but also the, the prospect of its economies. The idea of just simply having show and tell is to me irrelevant unless we also build economies amongst the people in the country who will be of African descent, as well as those Africans who go on the continent. And I stand here for this, uh, this august body to once again ask and require that you make sure there's teeth in such a commission. Thank you, Doctor. Good morning. My name is Patricia Wilson Aiden, and I'm the president and CEO of the African American Museum in Philadelphia. The African American Museum in Philadelphia brings diverse communities together in greater appreciation of the black experience through the combined narratives of art, history, and culture. Our museum was the first institution built by a major US city to house and to celebrate in the work of African Americans. In the four decades since its creation, the African American Museum has become a premier destination within our region's cultural landscape, serving over 80,000 visitors, including 20,000 school-aged children. The museum serves the community as a gathering place, an educational resource, and a steward of a vast collection of art and artifacts. Our audience gains a unique perspective on the art, history, and culture of African Americans in the African diaspora. On behalf of the museum and the constituency we serve, I would like to applaud Councilwoman Blackwell for introducing the resolution to create the Special Committee on 400 Years of African American History. As the region's foremost cultural institution dedicated to the celebration of history and culture of African Americans in the African diaspora, the African American Museum supports the creation of the proposed special committee and pledges our commitment to supporting its critical mission. Born from the unprecedented tragedy of the slave trade, the story and presence of people of African descent on North American soil is yet one of triumph. Ours is a complex history of challenges and injustices interwoven with achievements of unequaled consequence. From the moment that those 20 odd Negroes arrived at Old Point, Point Comfort in August of 1619, black people have influenced and informed the history and culture of this nation. The American story cannot and should not be told without reference to and acknowledgement of our presence and our role. 
Yet, we know that our contributions, the hardships and prejudice committed against us, coupled with our hard-won achievements, the bravery of our heroes, the leadership of our trailblazers, and the impact and influence of our innovators have too often been ignored, dismissed, and misinterpreted. It is only fitting that Philadelphia create a special committee tasked with commemorating the 40th anniversary of the arrival of Africans in the English colonies that would eventually become America. More important than the commemoration of this date is the special committee's charge to plan programs to acknowledge the impact of slavery, racial discrimination, and to coordinate and support scholarly research. This charge closely aligns with the work of the African American Museum in Philadelphia. We're eager to ensure that the work of the Federal Commission and the proposed special committee has meaningful impact and tangible outcomes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We can proceed. Thank you. Diane Turner, curator. I bring you peace and freedom from Mr. Charles Bloxon, curator emeritus, and the Charles L. Bloxon Afro-American Collection, where we house more than seven 100,000 items from about African American history and culture. The creation of a commission in the city is not only timely and important, but critical during these times. This year marks the 150th anniversary of the birth of W.E.B. Du Bois. On display in the Bloxon Collection is an exhibit celebrating W.E.B. Du Bois and the Philadelphia Negro. Du Bois is one of our nation's most prolific and innovative scholars, but is little known to many and is often just a footnote in our classrooms. In his book, The Souls of Black Folk, published in 1903, he writes, quote, the problem of the 20th century is the problem of the color line, end quote. I stand before you today in the 21st century to say that this remains a problem that has not been resolved. We need a commission. W.E.B. Du Bois also states, quote, herein lies the tragedy of the age. Not that men are poor, all men know something about poverty. Not that men are wicked, who is good? Not that men are ignorant, what is truth? Nay, but that men know so little of men. This is true of African American history. We know so little, yet African American history is American history, and African Americans are among the oldest Americans. Next year marks 400 years of the African presence in English colonies, but there are scholarly studies that show that Africans were in America, BC. We need a commission. In 2016, Mr. Bloxon had the Pennsylvania slave trade state marker placed along the Delaware River near Independence Seaport Museum to commemorate the lives of enslaved Africans brought as early as 1639. His commitment and dedication uh, has resulted in markers throughout the city. In talking with Mr. Bloxon, he stated the following, the year 2019 gives the city of Philadelphia a great opportunity to place a city marker to commemorate the enslavement of men, women, and children of African descent. He recommends that, quote, the honorable members of City Hall and the council unveil a city marker to commemorate the peculiar institution of enslavement in the so-called city of Philadelphia. So we strongly support this commission and we thank Councilwoman Janie Blackwell for introducing it. Thank you. Ma'am, 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 just, just for, for the record, just state your name, we didn't get you. Oh, name. I did at the beginning. Diane Turner, curator of the Charles L. Blocks and Afro-American Collection. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Yuma Ba. I'm the president of Echoes of Africa. And also, I'm a mother in the city of Philadelphia. I have a daughter who's 10 years old, 
who was born here. As African, we are more than 50,000 in the city of Philadelphia who come directly from Africa in the couple of years back to maybe around 1980s. And also, we all have almost kids in the city of Philadelphia. We thanks the councilwoman Jenny Blackwell to give us the opportunity to work with the community in the city of Philadelphia. We supporting this committee because as we know as African descendant, also we have a lot of issue in this country because sometimes the misunderstanding, our, our kids who just got here maybe a couple of years and people who have been here more than 400 years ago who come. We want this committee to happen to help all this com community to be able to work together, to understand also together. We say thank you to the councilwoman and hope so you're going to accept this committee. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Van Jessica Gladney and I'm representing the University of Pennsylvania's Penn Slavery Project. Uh, so, our project started last year, and um, our university had come forward a few years ago saying that we had nothing to do with the slave trade here in Philadelphia. And the reason that we are on semester number three is because our university, that turns out to be not true. And during our research, I realized that Pennsylvania and Philadelphia itself has a huge stake in American history. And I think it's really important for this committee to be based in Philadelphia. The Declaration of Independence was signed here, or written and signed, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Like, this is where America was born. And America was built by slavery. The American Revolution was paid for by slave labor. And if there's one city that's going to commemorate the 400th anniversary of slaves on this soil of our country, it should definitely be Philadelphia. And the University of Pennsylvania is excited to support and be involved in all the things we want to see uh, happen next year. Uh, so, thank you. Thank you for your testimony. You state your name for your uh, for the record, and you may. Good proceed. morning. My name is Gwen Ragsdale. My husband Jay Justin Ragsdale and I own and operate the Lest We Forget Slavery Museum. It's the only museum in Philadelphia with actual slavery artifacts that my husband has been collecting for the past 60 years. This is a Middle Passage shackle. This is what our people were forced to wear as they were brought from Africa to the Americas and other parts of the world. Depending on how many enslaved Africans they had would determine how this shackle would be used. One rung would come off and go around the ankle of one African, the other rung would go around the ankle of another African, and they would be shackled together for the duration. It took two to three months to get from the shores of West Africa to the shores of South Carolina. It was a suffering trip. Those men who worked in those ships were former prisoners who had been let out of prison by the Queen of England and told that they would get money at the end of the trip if they could have access to any of the females and while they were on that trip. Many of those women would be pregnant before they got to their final destination. The horrors didn't end there. It only began. It followed by hundreds of years of slavery. We must remember the legacy of slavery. We cannot forget it. It's important to understand that aspects of slavery are still with us today. We are so happy that uh, Councilwoman, Blount, Councilwoman Blackwell produced this resolution to commemorate this part of American history. This is not black history. This is American history. And it's important that we recognize that. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, please state your name for your record and you may proceed with your public comment. And I'm the chairman of the 400 year coalition. And what we have done, we've come together to actually perpetuate this for a whole year next year. Most struggles have talked about the slavery movement, but we want to present how the shackles of slavery have been mental and the shackles have been on the minds of our people for 400 years. And that's because it was misinformation, it was misreputation, it was deep franchise of the African American. So our coalition will have one event every week next year for 52 weeks. So whether it be like Black History where it's one month, we will have an event every week commemorating the 400 year struggle. <clears throat> 
So when you see, we have a website, we have some information that we'll be passing out a website, and we'd like you to put hashtag 400 years. We'd like to see that all over social media so that we will be represented in this struggle. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. You please state your name for the record. You may proceed with your public uh, comment. I am J. Justin Ragsdale, and I am chief curator for Lest We Forget the Black Holocaust Museum here in Philadelphia. I'm the other half. Gwen Ragsdale is my wife. I am her husband, so I, we really don't have a name. But what it is, <clears throat> what it is, we really want this to happen. This is very, very important, and we can't, I can't say it enough. We say it's forceful. We can go into anything we want to do, but we don't talk about the horrors of slavery, and that's very important that our children know it because it's a fallout that's coming from this that's on them because they don't know what happened to us. We paid a heavy price to get here, and we got to let him know. It's very important, so that's all I can say. You know the rest. Thank you for your testimony. My name is Michael Cord. I'm with a group called ATTAC, A-T-A-C, Avenging the Ancestors Coalition. And I'm really not sure what I am going to say. I just hope that the enslaved ancestors guide the words I'm about to say for the next two minutes. And the first thing they told me to say is this. Imagine that right now, as we're sitting here with our colleagues and maybe our spouses, maybe our children, that some Martians come down from outer space and they take your coworker, they take your wife, they take your husband, they take your son, they take your daughter, and they take you up to Mars. And when you're in Mars, they take away your English language. They take away your American nationality. They take away your Christian religion, your Muslim religion, your Judaic religion. They take away everything that made you what you were here on Earth. So now you're in Mars. You're not a Martian because you're not from Mars. You're no longer an Earthling because you're not in Earth anymore. For 246 years, from 1619 until 1865, that was the story of Africans in America. But it didn't stop in 1865. Many people think that the 13th Amendment, quote unquote, freed the slaves, ended slavery. It did not. 13th Amendment doesn't say slavery and involuntary servitude are hereby abolished, period. It doesn't say slavery and involuntary servitude are hereby abolished, exclamation point. It says slavery and involuntary servitude are hereby abolished, comma, except following conviction for a crime. So after the slave codes, after the slave codes, came the black codes, and the black codes were laws to criminalize black people. The law of vagrancy today came out of that. Vagrancy in 1865 is the same legal definition it is in 2018, being in public with no visible means of support. So black people enslaved for 246 years, here comes the 13th Amendment, they're so-called freed, the county sheriff comes along, pardon my language, and says, what are you niggers doing out here? They say, we have no job, we have no real estate, we have nothing. Okay, you have nothing, you're a vagrant. They were convicted, and from that we have mass incarceration today. Let me wrap this up in 30 seconds by saying this. I fully support what Councilwoman Blackwall is trying to do because the story of slavery in America is not just America in general. It's Pennsylvania beginning in 1684. The man on top of this building, William Penn, was a slaveholder held three at his Pensbury Manor. And in my final 10 seconds, let me say this. In terms of the history right here in Philadelphia, not just at Six and Market where George Washington enslaved black people, but at Front and Market, the London Coffee House, beginning in 1754, black men, women, and children were bought and sold. So the story of slavery is not just an American story, it's a Philadelphia story. Philadelphia helped to break it Philadelphia got to help to fix it. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony.